this woke CIA ad, the right wing is losing their minds over it, but not in the correct way, of course. Um, the CIA put out this embarrassing public service announcement, essentially, claiming that it's intersectional and that it supports everybody. and Everybody is welcome here. And um, Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, they've jumped upon it, basically saying that left wing ideology has infected these uh, intelligence agencies that are <laughs> as far from left wing as humanly possible, that they're basically unaccountable to no, uh, everybody and operate in the shadows and topple governments, left wing governments and uh, are violent and uh, whatever the case may be. The left has historically loved the intelligence community. Oh. Historically, we all know. Yeah. As, as uh, especially the communists, they love them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As uh, the intelligence community was assassinating civil rights leaders, at least they did it in a woke way. Um, but the reality is, is that uh, this is a way to co-opt and corporatize this kind of rhetoric to make intelligence community malfeasance seem less despicable. Can I also just say, like, not at all new? Like, anybody from this is why pe like, people talk about STEM. Uh, the humanities folks, if people are familiar with Graham Greene's The Quiet American, the, uh, the uh, CIA agent in there wants a third way between colonialism and communism, right? Like this, this sort of, they never, especially like, like agents, they don't consciously often know that they, uh, uh, or at least when they're in the recruitment stage, uh, know that they're just going to be serving the in interests of businesses. They think they're going to be patriots and they're dumb, right? Like I think, um, and, then, and once you get into like Edward Snowden, you find out what you're actually doing, it becomes a little bit more of a problem. But I, I do think like people, I saw some people saying nobody's going to be persuaded by this. And I think that's wrong. I think like uh, high school or college people, kids in college that are idealistic can totally get uh, swept up by this individualistic thing. It's just nothing new. And it says nothing about like, the underlying ideologies, in my opinion, although I do think there can be a little bit of uh, hyper individualism in some of this stuff. But anyway, we can play that. I agree. It, it could sway people. Let's take take a watch. Listen, whatever it's called. When I was 17, I quoted Zora Neale Hurston's How It Feels to Be Colored Me in my college application essay. The line that spoke to me stated simply, I am not tragically colored. There is no sorrow damned up in my soul nor lurking behind my eyes. I do not mind at all. At 17, I had no idea what life would bring, but Sora's sentiment articulated so beautifully how I felt as a daughter of immigrants then and now. Nothing about me was or is tragic. I am perfectly made. I can wax eloquent on complex legal issues in English while also belting Guayaquil de mis amores in Spanish. I can change a diaper with one hand and console a crying toddler with the other. I am a woman of color. I am a mom. I am a cisgender millennial who's been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. I am intersectional, but my existence is not a box checking exercise. I am a walking declaration, a woman whose inflection does not rise at the end of her sentences, suggesting that a question has been asked. This is a great shot here. This yeah. little sequence of her walking down the halls of the CIA and all these former white guy directors that she's serving under. It's wonderful. I just want to say I've been conning. She said I or me 17 times so far in the first minute. I am a mass. Uh, I'm a tool of mass. Um, murder, a tool of torture. I am interceptional. Yeah, but what about the place I am you're a working? walking declaration? A woman whose inflection does not rise at the end of her sentences, suggesting that a question has been asked. I did not sneak into CIA. My employment was not and is not the result of a fluke or slip through the cracks. I earned my way in and I earned my way up the ranks of this organization. I am educated, qualified and competent. And sometimes I struggle. I struggle feeling like I could do more, be more to my two sons and I struggle leaving the office when I feel there's so much more to do. I used to struggle with imposter syndrome, but at 36, <laughs> I refuse to internalize misguided patriarchal ideas of what a woman can or should be. I am tired of feeling like I'm supposed to apologize for the space I occupy rather than intoxicate people with my effort, my brilliance. I am proud of me, full stop. 
My parents left everything they knew and loved to expose me to opportunities they never had. Because of them, I stand here today a proud first-generation Latina and officer at CIA. I am unapologetically me. I want you to be unapologetically you, whoever you are. Know your worth. Because we don't apologize. Command your space. Yeah. The imp- uh, some, some like 35 mentions of I or me. Yeah. Um, talk about the individualism there. I mean, d- I don't want to get too far into her psychology, but when she said she used to suffer from imposter syndrome. Okay, I'm not going to say it. Go on. No, I mean, this is the type that I think this agency does, and these agencies, intelligence agencies in general, appeal to uh, well testing broken people, honestly, that don't have an identity outside of like their narcissism and maybe uh, some feelings toward their family. Well, um, like- And like that, you could talk about what I'm like and not talk about this agency, what it's doing to democracy worldwide ongoing, like, uh, and that's what the CIA needs for personnel. (laughs) They need somebody who is just thinking about them and what this means for them and their career ladder. Cause that's, that's what that's otherwise you end up leaking stuff. Yeah. Looking outside that it's going to be hard to achieve the missions that you're responsible for. (laughs) You and you and it felt a lot like, and it's probably the same kind of psyche that it appeals to. Though, I mean, I don't know if there's any commercials out there, but the same sort of things are said by people who are caught up in that whole like entrepreneurial hustle community, like the whole world yep. of like constantly like running your own business or running like ten different businesses at the same time and working uh, eighteen to twenty hours a day and and like bragging about it as if that's a healthy and good thing. Like it was the same sort of thing to me. Yeah, this is also like the uh, similar dynamic you would hear with like quote unquote or people who think they're good cops, yeah. um, right? Like they're like, oh, actually, this this uh, agency's been open to me. <laughs> it's like because you have, aren't really challenging it. But then it comes back to the individualism there, right? I, exactly. Yeah, and I love how she's basically that uh, more female prison guards meme essentially come to life. More female intersectional cisgender Latinx torturers and coup. <laughs> oh, and uh, government overthrowers and government. I, I almost lost it when she was going through those all. Like, I just, I, I just couldn't believe. I, I actually had not seen the ad. I mean, I'd seen it pass by the feed. I just couldn't bring myself to watch it until just now when you all forced me to watch it. Like some sort of CIA torture program. <laughs> I want to give credit to the comedian. I don't, I think I sent the clip, guys. I'm not sure if we have it. This comedian who did this amazing job um, basically making fun of this. I'm trying to pull up her name here, but she did just like a 50 second clip where she, um, yeah, a Blair Irk sign. Just take a listen to this. Like other girls, you know, I've never done what the patriarchy wanted me to do. When I was a little girl playing Marco Polo in the pool with my friends, I would hold their heads underwater and make them tell me where Polo was. <laughs> you know what I mean? When we played I Spy, I would always spy the communists, right? I would always find the communists. And so just things like that. You know, in college, uh, when other girls were doing acid, I was the one giving them the acid, and then I would psychologically torture them for information. <laughs> and so I've always just been uh, a little bit different. And that's why I joined the CIA. You know, if I could go back and tell this little baby girl something, I think I would tell her that, uh, you know, women can do murder too. We can do a little murder too, if, if we want to. <laughs> Blair sign legend. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not comfortable with that. It reeks of white feminism to me. Not respecting a strong Latinx woman, take cisgender taking on her role at the CIA. I don't know what this white feminist bullshit's talking one, about here. One last little thing I picked up on in there, like a, a word choice of diction, was uh, that she used the word. Uh, the verb to intoxicate people and i was like like with her positive attributes and i was like that's one way of uh, describing the work i guess and yeah i don't know i don't trust her either bender she didn't even announce her pronouns at the start of the video right all right it reeks of white supremacy to me liberal white feminism over here all right she ain't woke like the cia the central intelligence uh, well i'm sorry excuse me the central intersectional agency no the cisgender intersect oh uh 
you can see. Yeah. Well, then, no, no, I'm actually, unfortunately, quoting a Sean Hannity graphic there. 